This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Now, today we have an episode from a gentleman named Mello, um, uh, and he's pretty much setting up an aquaponics system in the design phase and starting to build, um, and he just wants a few pointers to see if we can, uh, you know, can direct him in the right, uh, in the right direction um, to prevent him from becoming a biscuit-headed grower and wasting a lot of time money and energy that you don't have to waste when you're doing aquaponics because simplicity is the name of the game. Now let's get right into the video. Um, it's a short video and there's a few questions that were asked underneath the video and we'll go ahead and address those as well. So let's get right into the video. Woo! Mellow here, Mad Bonnie Organic Farms. Uh, this is where my aquaponics lab is going to be. This is going to be uh, 60 feet long post to post and then from there to there is 14 feet and from this one to that one is 14 feet and we're going to dig 50 foot long deep water troughs in the middle now one thing that i want to say you said that you're going to dig deep water culture troughs so i want to warn you i don't know if you've done this already because you submitted this video up, up, uh, about two two weeks ago two or three weeks ago um the thing is, if you're going to dig out deep water culture system, you have to be aware that it's going to make everything pretty much a lot more difficult. So when you're digging it out, you're, you're making now your deep water culture system lower than the ground level, which means that for your sump tank, you're going to have to make it even lower and all your plumbing is going to have to be even lower. So you're going to have to do a lot of digging. Um, and I know why you're doing this. You're doing this because you want to save money. You don't want to really spend money on the extra plywood. Uh, um, the support size and the uh, and the bottom of it, um, and you will save money doing it this way. But as everyone tries to cut corners, and I'm not saying that well, you are trying to cut corners, but everyone tries to cut corners. And I've been here before too. I've been the master of corner cutting um, back in the day. But the thing is, when you cut corners, doing these little things like this, there's a reason why you don't see people doing this, like you know, uh, di digging out deep water culture troughs and um, and setting up their system that way. Is because you can do it this way and you'll save a few bucks, you know, $80, $90, $100 on, on, on wood and plywood and, uh, and your lumber. But the amount of time that it's going to take to fix any problems that occur with this deep water culture system and just the, the, the time it takes to build and dig out all this stuff, you've wasted, like, you, you're valuing your time at $200 an hour times however long it, or $200 times however long it takes you to do this. It's going to take a pretty long time to dig this out. I don't know if you have a, a tractor or anything to do it, but if you try to dig this thing by hand, it's going to take an extremely long amount, amount of time to dig it out. So that's something you may want to reconsider. I always would suggest to build your, your, your system above ground. Only thing that you should be putting on the ground really is the uh, sump tank and maybe a few, um, a few pipes just to connect to it. But once you put this deep water, you dig this deep water culture trough out and you dig it a, a pretty much a foot uh, underground, then all the piping and stuff is just going to have to be even much more lower than that. And it's just going to be just a big headache. Like I said, if you, especially if you try to fix it, you have any problems that happen, it's just going to be a big headache. So above ground is what I would suggest you do. I would suggest if you don't have the money to do the project, you know, uh, um, effectively, then I would probably scale it down. I probably wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't spend all the money on these large troughs. Maybe you want to scale it down a bit so you can use the right material and then you can develop uh, good habits. This is one thing that I ran into when I first started trying to build big and not having all the money to really do it correctly. And then you find out you do all this big stuff and then now you're, you, you just, you, you have a big system that's inefficient. So I want you to consider that. So let's continue uh, going with the rest of this video. We need a little space at each end and then a path down the middle. And then here we have uh, 15 by 14 to work with. We're going to build a little platform and I'm going to put two 250 gallon IBC totes here. So the IBC totes, if you watch my videos, I always discuss, and I know that you said on here that you're working with a budget, which is fine. So you start out with that. Okay, that's fine. But I would move away from those as fast as possible. Those are ineffective um, ways to grow fish, raise fish, especially when you're doing it at, you know, the, the, the proper densities and you're really trying to grow fish effectively. Those are not going to be good systems. You want to invest in something that is designed for the specific 
um, a, a setup that you're trying to put together, growing fish. You want to have aquaculture tanks, either round tanks, probably for your system, round tanks are going to be the best. Um, you know, you have a, you're going to have a, you have a, uh, you know, a moderately sized system. So uh, round tanks are going to be the best for you and it's going to allow you to grow effectively. That's the thing. We want to grow effectively and efficiently. You know, we don't want to just toss stuff up because we're growing on a budget. That's not, those are not good, good habits, um, to continue to practice with. So that is what I, I'm always going to recommend. I understand your situation. You're working with what you got. Um, but eventually you want to look into getting rid of the IBC totes using those for something else. You can use them for something else, but growing fish, um, it's just not going to, you can't really remove solids that well in those, um, in those tanks. So, um, that's what I would definitely suggest on that. And I'm going to put my filters here and I'm going to put in the ground at this portion, some sort of sump tank. Not sure how I'm going to do it yet. Now the sump tank, you asked about that. And, um, let me see if you have that. I thought I seen it somewhere, but if you don't have it, any one of your questions, I'll just throw it out there. And the sump tank, when you're going to size this for this type of system, first of all, wait, let's talk about how you had it, um, how you uh, want to put it up, put it together. You say on here you want to do a split flow. I don't recommend doing a split flow for a deep water culture trough because you're gonna, it's going to require a larger pump um, than what you would need if doing a uh, gravity flow system. So I would just do a gravity flow setup for deep water culture only setups. That's what I would recommend. Um, but as far as the... Um, the sump tank sizing, what you want to do is the flow rate that you have going in your system. So let's say you have um, 10 gallons per minute. You want to base it off of how many gallons per minute. 10 gallons per minute, the way you're going to size your sump tank, multiply that by either between 3 and 5, and that's going to give you your, um, your sump tank volume. So if it's 10 gallons per hour, we use 4. This, this is just a rule of thumb. If we just use 4, then you're going to need a 40-gallon sump tank. So that's basically uh, a quick rule of thumb for calculating a, a, a sump tank size for these continuously flowing systems. But this is going to be my aquaponics setup. And there's going to be a hoop house over all this. So can't wait to give it a shot. Okay, so some of the other questions that you ask about your system. You said you have a 500 gallon per hour pump and you weren't sure if that's going to do. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not going to do. It's not going to work. You have two IBC totes. So you have 500 gallons already total. Um, and when you do your you need to get your stocking densities correct. You're going to need to exchange that water in there at least once per hour. So we need a, 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 a pump that can exchange that at least once per hour, which is 500 gallons per hour. But the 500 gallon per hour pump that you have is rated for, uh, it's assuming that your uh, pump doesn't have to lift any water. As soon as the pump has to lift water, those that rating and efficiency is going to drop significantly. So you're going to have to lift water from your sump tank to your um IBC totes at least three to four feet, at least three to four feet. So with that being said, you have a 500 gallon per hour pump. We need at least 500 gallons to, to uh, um, adequately supply, uh, replenish the water in those IBC uh, totes. So once we use that 500 gallon per hour pump, we lift water up. Now the efficiency is gone. You're probably getting 275, 300 gallons out of that. That's not enough. You need to upsize the pump, look at the manufacturer, find out the head height that you have to lift the water, and then uh, go off of their charts to find out um, which size pump that you need. So I would definitely look into um, getting a different size pump for this because this is not going to work. This may work in the beginning stages when your fish are very small, but once they start reaching maturity, if you're using correct, correctly uh, um, the, are the recommended densities that, that I recommend, the 50 or the uh, half pound per gallon, um, if you're using that then you're definitely going to um, need to have adequate water replenishment going through your system. So like I said, this may work when you have baby fish in there, you have small fish in there, and the water doesn't need to be, be replenished as much because the oxygen demand isn't, um, isn't as high. But as the fish grow, woo, they're going to need oxygen or they're going to bite the dust. So that's one thing that I would look into. Let me see what else you have on here. Boom, boom, split flow. Okay, we talked about that. Still working on the details. Boom, planning 12 volt pump with battery and solar cell. You said you have that already. Okay, you're gonna run it off of solar. That's fine. If you have the setup and all that, go for it. You know, go for it. Um, uh, I don't see any problem with that. Let's see what else you have on here. Boom, 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 water temperature. You said my biggest concern is water temperature. How to keep it stable for free. See, now, now, now you know, you're asking a lot. If you wanna keep it stable for free, you know, you're asking a lot. When you, there's no such thing as free, ever. Either you're gonna spend your time or you're going to spend your money, but you're going to spend something and none of those are free. So if you want to do it, well, for free, 
Um, the only thing what I would suggest is to keep it stable um, or to help keep it stable because you're not going to be able to keep it stable for free. It's just not going to happen. Um, nature is just, it, it, it trumps everything if you try to just use free and natural stuff. Nature's going to trump, nature's always going to win. It's always going to win. So you have to add either, you're going to have to add some type of devices that humans manufacture in order to solve this problem, or you're going to have to spend a lot of your time um, doing manual things um, uh, to, to, to try to stabilize the temperature. But either one of those is, is going to involve some type of investment. So, But if you don't want to spend money, you're going to spend your time, which I almost 90% of the time never suggest. Um, but if you're going to spend your, um, your, your time then the way you can do it, you can you can keep your um, your 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 water stable um, by um, by using the, your hoop house. That's going to be one thing. Your hoop house that's going to keep heat in for the if you're trying to keep it uh, the, the temperatures warm. You're usually going to use your hoop house with your greenhouse plastic on there. You might have to add a double layer on there, um, and during the winter time that will help that. Um, if you're trying to uh, cool it, or if, also I've also seen people use compost piles around their greenhouse and their hoop houses. And that also helps uh, keep some uh, keep some of the heat contained inside of there. Now, if you're trying to cool it um, during the summertime, what you use, what I use, is a, a shade cloth. That's one thing to help. Um, it's a passive uh, form of, uh, of of cooling, and that's going to help. And also, the floating raft units that you have on there, those are also going to serve as a way to help stabilize the temperature and, and cool the temperature when when the, um, when it's hot. So those are pretty much. Two things that I would suggest, two or three uh, little suggestions that I would make if you want to try to use some type of passive way of doing it. But at the end of the day, there's probably no way of doing it absolutely free without using some type of technology to get the right temperatures that you want for your system. It's just not, you know, it's just not the way the world works. It's just not, there's a reason why we have to come up with all these type of technology. If we can do everything for free and, uh, and it'd be effectively, uh, then that's probably what we would do. But technology helps us advance and speed that stuff up. So um, that's what eventually, if you're serious and you really get into production, you're probably going to have to get into some type of investment of something that you have to pay for. Um, but other than that, um, you know, you seem like you pretty much have your, your design put together um, and you, it looks like you're getting your project started, which is good. So if you have any other questions, then let me know. I want to thank you again for submitting your video. Um, and hopefully this has helped you out. And anyone else that's listening, hopefully it's helped you out as well. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's pretty much it that I see here from the questions that you have. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo!